how did they get lost and dispersed completely? Like what happened there? So I am not certain that they did get completely lost. There's a couple of myths Mm -hmm. and the myths are kind of fun to just annihilate because so many people believe them. See, I'm the original gangster that still still says AD. I'm not, you know, I'm not one of those academic betas that says CE. If there's a historical Abraham, which we all at this table believe there was, genetically, there's there would be massive spread throughout yeah. the world to Cardin's Pass. This is where the Samaritans come from. The Samaritans are descendants of the Lost Ten Tribes. Well, the Samaritans weren't lost, right? Like True. We know where they yeah, were living absolutely. in the time of Jesus. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Ward Radio. I'm your host, Cardinalis. I'm joined in the studio by Sean Bailey. I'm also joined by Brad Whitbeck, Don Bradley, and Joshua Gailey, all right? He is our big bad bicker tonight, brother, from another mother. The Sultan of Sectarianism. What did we call you again the other day? The Warden of Spirit Prison himself, <laughs> Joshua Gailey. He's our bicker tonight brother from the Church of Jesus Christ back in Pennsylvania. And then there's me. Hi, the guy that didn't write a book. So anyway, um, yet, yes, all yet, you are authors yet, here. Right. You know, yes. And I'm the only non-author. And today we're going to talk about who are the 10 tribes of Israel and where are they now? Because the lost Sean ten here, tribes, oh yeah, right? we're the lost ten tribes of Israel, and then Sean's going to tell us where they're at and um, how we can find them, how we can bring them back, and then you guys and are going to tell us. Conclude by going and finding them. Yes, exactly. On so show it's a documentary. Tonight. It's a documentary <laughs> on the where are they now? It's a travel log. It's a travel log. <laughs> so anyway, Sean, what are the uh, lost ten tribes of Israel? You specialize in all this cool end of days, book of Revelation, second coming stuff. Who are the Lost Ten Tribes of Israel? How do we find them? Where are they? And how do we get them back? Yeah, so Reader's Digest version of this. um, There was a guy named Jacob. And Jacob was the son of Isaac, who was the son of Abraham. So our founding fathers of Abrahamic tradition, right? Um, Jacob had his name changed to Israel. And then he subsequently had 12 sons and one daughter. Dinah, right? Mm-hmm. So he had these 12 sons, and the 12 sons had nations that grew out of them. And each one of these nations was called a tribe. And every one of these tribes was a tribe of Israel because that was their father. Hey, right? what kind of population are we talking about here, by the way? Like like somewhere north of 12. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay rock on. Thanks, 12, 13 man. with the sister. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. yeah thanks. <laughs> At different times, there were different amounts, right? When there was, uh, when they were going through um, the Exodus with Moses, there were millions maybe, right? So the 12 tribes of Israel had lots and lots of people. Mm-hmm. And eventually they... Like, uh, and they were relatively prolific in their number of children. Like for context, sure. you have instances like where the the Egyptians, when they ordered the killing of the first son of all of the Jews, right? It was because they were multiplying so quickly the Egyptians were worried that they would be able to rise up, right? So you have this um, recurring thing that they were very fertile. They had lots of kids. At least way more fertile than the Egyptians. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think that's it's their says fertility rate was really high. 600,000 males in the Exodus. Yeah. So, yeah, when you say millions, add women and, and how many? How when many you say it have. says, was that like the Bible and I just missed that number? Or is yeah, that's that in the just book a, of Exodus, right? Yeah. yeah. It's 600,000 males. Oh, wow. And that's, that's pretty like intense. adult males, right? Oh, geez. Right. So it was over probably 2 million people then, right? right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You don't want to be behind that caravan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. Keep going, Sean. All right. So when they followed Moses through the Red Sea and they were baptized in the cloud and in the sea, right? We love that verse. Yeah. Um, they came into the promised land eventually following Joshua. Um, Joshua led them into the promised land and they started to divide the land into different places so that they could all go Joshua. Joshua, Very good. Right. (laughs) They could um, inherit the land that was promised to Abraham, their father. And um, some of the the tribes were just on this side of the river Jordan and some were on the other side. And it was, there's lots of, uh, of that entire land that was inhabited by this, this uh, group of millions of people. They were called the children of Israel, and they inhabited the Holy Land that we now know as Palestine or Judea, right? 
And eventually what happened was they anointed a king and this king was named Saul and um, his successor was named David and David had a successor named Solomon. And after Solomon, the kingdom split in two. Um, they had Rehoboam and Jeroboam who um, became this, the respective kings of the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom was 10 tribes. The southern kingdom was two tribes. I see you guys all nodding. I'm like, dude, I couldn't regurgitate this in a million years if I tried. But okay, keep going. So the two tribes this in the southern course. kingdom were the tribes of Judah and Benjamin. And in the northern kingdom, they had Ephraim and Manasseh and a whole bunch of other tribes that were part of that northern kingdom. Okay, does this look pretty accurate? I, I'll be honest with you. I just Googled the first map I could find that looks semi-decent, and this is what I came up with. Is that looking familiar, brother? Yeah. What's, what's Simeon doing down there? Okay, cool. Yeah. Geez, Simeon. What are you doing? No, I'm just kidding. I have no idea. So anyway, yeah, keep going, bro. So what happened was the northern kingdom was run by Ephraim, and Ephraim started to go into apostasy a little bit. They started to um, have their own version of the of the gospel, or at least the law back then. Right? Just a little bit of idolatry. Okay. Just a little. Yeah. Well, hurry up. Get to the freaking cool the nuggets, baby. Like why they lost, man. Well, the reason that they lost They smoke weed and walk into the wilderness. Are they like the freaking old mechs that just disappeared that one day? Rosters, like what? Bro, that <laughs> okay, yeah. What what's going on, so dog? They started putting all of these these fields of weed. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, um, it's like so, Wizard of Oz. They got lost on the way to the Emerald City. Come on, what's going on? So the <laughs> northern kingdom was overtaken by a, a, a kingdom called Assyria. And Assyria came in. It was around, I can't remember the exact year, but it was like 700, 720, something Seven, like that. 721, I think. 721? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And they came in. They destroyed. They didn't destroy, but they kind of took over the northern kingdom. And for um, probably the, well, definitely by the grace of God, the southern kingdom was able to survive. And so when Assyria took over the northern kingdom, there were three things that happened. The first thing that happened was some of those tribes escaped to the southern kingdom. And we know we have definitive proof of that because Lehi was of the tribe of Manasseh, which was one of the 10 tribes. Of the northern kingdom. Of the northern kingdom. How do we know Lehi was from the tribe of Manasseh? It the Book of Mormon says, says it so. in this book called the Book of Mormon. The crap, I feel like an idiot. <laughs> okay, cool. You know, I blame the bicker tonight, Book of Mormon. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll just be honest with you. I, I just, you know, just you need can't trust those smaller blue. sects, those man. Mark you know, that that just, Jesus, <laughs> threw them off. It wasn't in red letters, so you didn't read that. Book. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah. I just it's, it's just, just the important parts, the red letters. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. Lehi, Lehi found it out through the brass plates, right? So yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Yeah, he, he no, but I thought it said that he was a descendant from Joseph. He was through his and son Manasseh, Manasseh was. Ephraim and Manasseh are sons of Joseph. I mean, I'm an idiot. Sorry, <laughs> we, we can't say that anymore. We skipped over that little <laughs> yeah, part. Go, um, we going. skipped over the part where Joseph was split into two, and there right. actually were 13 tribes. Okay, but the Levites didn't get land. They got the temple responsibility, just authority. authority. Yeah. yeah. So okay, cool. there were 12 sections like of land. Lands. Cool. Rock yeah. on. Okay. Yep. Um, so some escaped to the southern kingdom. Like Lehi and his, or Lehi. We're twelve minutes in, and I don't know how they got lost. Well, how they get lost, dude? Let's cut to that chase. Okay, cool. Right on. (laughs) So, when the northern kingdom was taken over by Assyria, they escaped to some escaped to the southern kingdom. Some actually intermingled with the Assyrians, right? And they became oh. what were, are called Samaritans. And, and some then others were, were abducted by aliens. They were and abducted by... They a, were assimilated into the lizard people in the North Pole, dude, beyond the ice shelf. This is now the story of how Brad came from Canada. Yes, <laughs> is, in, exactly, like, actually. They, they now know them as Canadians. Said to Canada. <laughs> okay, well, so you finally said something that, like, perked my ears up. You, so <laughs> Ice shelf. The uh, No, no, no. Oh, gotcha, yes. <laughs> Aliens. So those that... Those that intermingled with the Assyrians, that's the birth of the Samaritans? Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So is that why? The, oh, you know, I just said, oh, interesting, didn't I? You did. Quaker has to show <laughs> you. There, there's a meme going around now. And like one of uh, like Quaker's girlfriend said, this is how I feel in public when somebody uh, finds out that I'm dating Quaker L and somebody sent them the clip of me saying, oh, <laughs> interesting. You know, it's become like a meme right now. So anyway, that's where the Assyrians. So Assyrians mixing with Jews Samaritans. is how we got the Samaritans. Yeah. Yes. And the wow. Jews consider them like mudbloods. 
I mean, that wasn't a term, but uh, yeah. like half blood, right. sort of, right? Yeah. This is because part of why they rejected the Samaritans, why they were prejudiced against the Samaritans. In, in part because part yeah. of the law of Moses was to not marry outside of the covenant. Wait, right? but the Jews have intermingled with a bazillion. Like, there's Sephardic, exactly. there's there's uh, Russian, there's Polish Jews. There's like w- wherever in the world Jews live, they look like the people around them. So where there are Jews who have lived for a long time in Africa. They're black. Yeah, there there's Ethiopic Jews, Jews who, and yeah. There was a Jewish community for thousands of years in China until actually only the last couple of generations they finally fully assimilated and disappeared. Really? But they looked completely Chinese. So huh. wherever the Jews have gone, they've always intermarried. But it is so why have they come out? When the northern tribe people did it, then they got mad. Yeah. So the Sephardic Jews are off the hook. But it's just the Ashkenazi that are but they're getting mad. Uh, wow, that is so interesting. So that's where the whole hatred of the Samaritans comes from, right. from mixing with the Assyrians right. in 7th century BC, you said? Um, well, that's when it began. 8th eight, eight, eight century BC. Yeah, 8th wow. century, that's when it Jeez. began. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's interesting. Um, there was a third group, though, that did not necessarily mix with the Assyrians. <laughs> and okay, they I'm sorry. were the lizard people. <laughs> but, yeah, before you move on, when I went, I was just thinking, like, how can somebody be so prejudiced about just somebody that's just so much exactly like them? But when I went to BYU, my first girlfriend had one mandate from her father, and that was, don't you dare date a Californian. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, was like Utah California? Mormons. <laughs> Got, no, she was from Texas and her oh. father literally forbade her. She said, like, I'm nervous to tell my dad where you're from. Like, I've told him about you and I really like you and they're excited to meet you. But I still haven't told them that you're from California yet because like he will literally be like visibly angry. And so I thought that was always pretty funny. Didn't work out. <laughs> yeah, didn't work out. Her loss. Well, but. I was born in California, so I'm there, okay. I'm there with you. Rock on. Nice. Um, so... The rest of the 10 tribes, and this is why they're called lost often, the rest of the 10 tribes were led away. They were led out of the land of the northern kingdom to all of the northern countries, all of the northern nations that were north Like Canada, Norway, Lithuania. (laughs) Russia, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, wait, what, they were led into Syria? They were led into Turkey? They were led into Syria first, and then they they were scattered throughout the entire world. Okay. Particularly so, Kazakhstan, where they said, my wife. No. <laughs> as often as possible. I, I dug it. So Borat was Jewish now of the Lost Tenth tribe. He is no. actually Jewish. Yeah. Oh, he okay. actually is Sasha Baron Cohen. In, yeah, in real life. You're right. That's funny. Okay. We found one of the Lost Tribes. Yeah. <laughs> The There's number one. We got nine more to go. Right? That's it. Go. <laughs> the Cohen Check. tribe, uh, uh, the led Cohen by tribe. Chief Sasha Baron. Okay, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> the dictator. Um, so he, <laughs> um, not he, but the, the 10 tribes were scattered to the northern countries. And that's where the idea that they are somehow in like the North Pole or something like that. That's kind of where that idea comes from. Which is accurate. <laughs> With, with I have yet Nicholas. to see someone disprove it with. Okay, so evidence. Don, 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 Sean, freaking Josh, anybody, like, how can we don't know where these cats are? Like, a massive migration couldn't happen without us really knowing about it. Okay, uh, like we actually have a surprising wealth of knowledge of where lots of people went. Why are the lost end tribes so lost in comparison to other groups that ended up intermingling with other ancients? Because you cowards will not go into the depths of the North Pole to seek them out within the hollow earth, okay? That is where they were, and no one's going to do it. They all call the idea crazy because they don't want to Admiral Byrd did! Admiral Byrd did! It's because Elon Musk has not built his spaceship to go to Mars yet. I'm sorry, by the way. Quake is just not here right now, and I needed uh, yeah. to He's step filling in. the gap. He's yeah. Dude, well, He's actually, you know what's so interesting? Uh, the first... Do you know what the first reference to hollow earth is? Mormons have a huge, Don, I'm going to say something that you haven't heard yet. And you're going to be like, oh. He'll be like, no, I said that. And, and you know, <laughs> and, and you're, I, I, see, I know something that I don't think Don Bradley knows right now. And this is how you must feel all the time with <laughs> everybody. You know what I'm saying? But Mormons have a very interesting uh, claim to fame amongst hollow earthers. And do you know what that is? What? The very first reference to Hollow Earth comes from a Mormon science fiction writer in the early, early 20th century who wrote a small little bit of fiction about a man searching 
for the lost 10 tribes of Israel. He was a, a Scandinavian oh. who had converted in the late 1800s to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and moved to in America. In a northern country. You know, yeah. and he'd written a, a science fiction book about finding an entrance to hollow earth in pursuit of the lost 10 tribes of Israel. And hollow earthers recognize it as like the first reference to hollow earth. We did that dog. So while you're messing around with all your like funny business with the lost 116 pages, real academics were writing about <laughs> finding the lost 10 tribes of Israel. You keep that in hollow fame, earth. Bro. Do you, you guys can, you know, claim to fame. Do you think that Don was writing his 116 pages book in the 1800s? How old do you think he is? <laughs> you know, well, I don't know, but just like we need to get our priorities right and start finding these tribes. Quit messing around with fool's cap. Have, have, you know, have we considered that the lost tribes might be with the lost pages Ooh. oh Boom. that's that was a pretty solid segue dog it was that was a was. pretty they're that not actually, they're not for what it's worth but I, got <laughs> well, I, mean, I mean technically you got a bit of Ephraim from Mormon NASA involved maybe yeah yeah, okay. yeah that's true okay. that's true okay so anyway uh, how did they get lost yeah okay, so how did they get lost that's what happened to them Okay, so they were scattered into the northern countries, and lots and lots of prophets have prophecies about them coming back. But but how I I, I want to echo Cardin's question because I totally derailed it. Um, how did they get lost and dispersed completely? Like what happened there? So I am not certain that they did get completely lost. Um, oh, interesting. So since we know. The empire that was so what what the Assyrians did, by the way, can I just say how you totally are the best at just casting some kind of aspersion on an existing orthodox <laughs> theory, you know, where you're just like, so I'm not quite sure it really was one hundred and sixteen pages. <laughs> if you look at the fool's cap, there's actually more, like you got this inflection, bro, where you're about to like euphemistically drop a bomb on a pre-existing supposedly settled fact with just some serious research. And I lap it up like a dog. Right. You know what I'm saying, but keep going. Hit it. Okay. So, um, the, um, you're not exactly sure that they getting, were lost. Now where was I going? Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. Um, so we know what the Assyrians would do is when they conquered a people, they wanted to destroy all possibility of that people giving resistance to them later. Mm. And so the way to do that is you scatter them throughout different parts of the empire and then you bring in others to kind of mix together with them so they lose their distinctive ethnic identity so they no longer will resist you. They will just become because they generic, are you. generic Assyrians. Yeah, right? you yeah. don't fight against yourself. And so since we know the, what the boundaries of the Assyrian Empire were at the time, we know where they would have been sending them. They would have been sending them within a certain area. It's not like yeah. they would have been sending them. I mean, the, the people may have spread over time after that to other places, but during the time of the Assyrian Empire, they would have just been sending them in that empire. So if we look at the peoples who lived in that empire, like those are we're, people from that area are going to be descendants of the lost tribes. And, and then and that's primarily in the North Pole, right? A, bingo. Yeah. Right? yeah. Because <laughs> one of the things we with, know with about ancient elves. Assyria, have, if you've ever seen the depictions of them with those long beards, dude, Santa Claus. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, hey, so, you know, yeah, uh, there we go. He brings so, them full so circle. The, the Assyrian Empire apparently went inside of the North Pole. Right? Yeah. So they yeah, rock on, dude. Um, the other thing that I was going to say, um, <laughs> probably less reliable, consider it. But um, oh, yeah. um, so since, as uh, Sean was noting earlier, the w this is where the Samaritans come from. The Samaritans are descendants of the Lost Ten Tribes. Well, the Samaritans weren't lost. Right. Like True. we mm -hmm. know where they yeah, were living absolutely. in the time of Jesus. And then after the time of Jesus, we know where they were for the next several hundred years. Right. So and they were a, new, a plentiful people. So uh, several hundred years after Jesus, it was estimated there were like two million of them and like the 700s A.D. Oh, interesting. OK. So they didn't all just disappear. So where are the Samaritans now? So what happened is after Islam arose, in the, like the century and a half or so after the rise of Islam, uh, they had quickly taken over the area of Jerusalem, Palestine, and they, one of their leaders decided he was going to forcibly convert the Samaritans. Mm. And so- To Islam. To Islam, and most of them went along with it. Now there's a tiny Samaritan sect today that has like a few hundred people. 
In well, I've Israel? seen on that YouTube channel Useful Charts, which mm -hmm. is amazing. They make charts of everything from medieval families, genealogy to the genealogy of Jesus Christ to like the sex of Mormonism or what sex of Christianity survive and how they made it through. And yeah, I've seen the, the Samaritans logo on there of different mm. sects of Judaism that still survived, okay. survive to this mm. day. Yeah. So I know they're still out there. So, so there are a few hundred of them, right? So there are some of the remnants of the 10 tribes right there, right? But more of them would have been in Samaria who were forcibly converted to Islam well, since the area of Samaria is, you know, where is part of what we would think of today as Palestine uh, and on the edge of Palestine. Well, who are the people who live there today who be their descendants? It's the Palestinians. Right. Mm, exactly. And so when the Jews and the Palestinians are fighting, they're actually both descendants of the House of Israel. 100%. Whoa. Yeah, fascinating. Yep. Wait, OK, so Reader's Digest. I want to steel man this and make sure I ingested everything right. That we know that when the Assyrians were basically invading Israel, okay, they were invading the northern kingdom first, and the Jews that went off with the Assyrians and intermingled with them and so on and so forth became the Samaritans. And the Samaritans did indeed exist those 700 years into the life of Christ, if not 200 years after them. Um, all the way up until Islam, which was birthed in about 600 mm -hmm. AD, right? Right, right? See, I'm the original gangster that still, still says AD. I'm not, you know, I'm not one of those academic betas that says CE. Common era. You know, yeah, I, I still, still say AD. Common to you know, what? I, I'm thug. I'm thug. <laughs> all right. No, I'm just kidding. So anyway, um, so all the way up until um, about like the 6th or 7th century AD, like a thousand years later, they still existed, but then were forcibly converted mm -hmm. by invading uh, Islamists to such a degree that there's really only several hundred, you say, that exist now, there possibly? Like, or? Uh, well, from what I understand, there are only a few hundred who still self-identify as Samaritans. Mm. So you have, they would, yes. So we got to go people. find these people. This is cool. Like, I want to go find a Samaritan and just like interview him. Like, what's up, dog? <laughs> Like Jesus, like thought I live you, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and then the have rest you heard of the, the stories. Ten yeah. tribes of Israel, they were scattered around where Turkey, the Black Sea, like in that yeah, area, so, and so, then right. Right. disseminated further throughout. And right. I think when you're talking mm -hmm. about the lost ten tribes, primarily that's viewed in Scripture and prophetically, not as Samaritan, but actually, even though, right, you know. What Don's saying is absolutely correct. Yeah. But I think primarily our minds go to the ones that we don't necessarily. That are scattered and we lose record the, the of where they went. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So wow. to, to take that up one step further. And now they're fighting each other, but they have that and, common answer. Do they know this? And, Do they know what? Well, if we found them, we could ask, but. Um, well, no, but Don just literally said when the Palestinians are fighting the Israelis, oh, they forget Oh, you're back that, on the Palestinians. Yeah. Like. Man, that's great. Oh, that's tragic. So another fascinating thing with the Lost Ten Tribes is when you look at some of the th things said in the Book of Mormon with the other tribes that are scattered yes. and the records that they have mm -hmm. that will come forth one day, you have these people who are aware of where they came from and they've been scattered all throughout the world. And so it's a very fascinating thing. I, I, I don't know. I see echoes of this in like what happens in Peru. And some of the stuff around like Viracocha and what's happening there. It and sounds, Polynesia. yeah, it, it sounds very similar to the experience of some of the people of Nephi. You know, well, Nephi talks about them being scattered to the Isles of the Sea. Exactly. So, and so they, we know that they left their world, their known world. Wow. So there's so a couple yeah. of myths mm -hmm. and the myths are kind of fun to just annihilate because so many people believe them. Um, the first myth is that all of the 10 tribes are in one body somewhere. In the North Pole. Good point. And it, it could be the North Pole. Some people say it's on a planet. Some people say that it's like this knob off the earth that's invisible. It's, so There's some uh, weird stuff out the there. The knob off the earth that's invisible is the entrance to the North Pole, which is a common misunderstanding. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, cool. All right. Thanks for clarifying. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
It's there's, like a kettle, like a kettle you collect <laughs> sap in. <laughs> Savage. According to Joseph Smith. Only yeah, a Canadian yeah. would know all of this information about what is happening up there. It's yeah, Canadian yeah. history. <laughs> it's the North Pole is in Canada's like physical boundaries. It was in my ward boundaries in my singles <laughs> oh, <wow>. ward. <laughs> in, like literally in my ward boundaries for my singles ward up in Canada in Edmonton. So he dated some single elves. Um, Dude, they're so hot. <laughs> That's funny. The no cutest pun little intended. rosy cheeks. They they can survive the cold because of it. But yeah, sure. <laughs> so that's the that's myth number one is that they're all in one body. They're not. We they're know that scattered. because they're scattered all throughout all nations. The Book of Mormon makes it very clear that they are scattered among all nations. Right. Myth number two is that the tribes of Israel, we don't have any clue where they are. That's a myth. We do. Um, Don has literally told us where some of them are right now. They're the Palestinians in, in the land of Palestine, right? Um, in this, this literal state of Israel. But who were the 10 tribes again? Ephraim, Manasseh. Do we have a clue where Ephraim and Manasseh are? In part, you've got them in the this, this Book of room. Mormon. Yeah. <laughs> literally oh. in this room. When we receive patriarchal blessings um, throughout the church, the patriarch declares the lineage of those who receive their patriarchal blessing. And for the most part, the members of the church are from the tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh, right? And there was a huge amount of, of people who came from the British Isles. And the um, generally speaking, and Donna can probably back me up on this, um, we believe that- That's gotta be kind of cool. The British Isles. I think you're were, about to say something and be like, yeah, Donald backed me up on I this. I know, right? You know, like that's like. <laughs> well, he, he knew he wasn't right? going to get Josh. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just we just created a little differentiator right here. Yeah, yeah because funny. because you guys don't believe you don't have the patriarchal blessing. Correct. Right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, snap. Really? Yeah. Yeah. We talked oh, about that. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in the British Isles, um, that is where the Ephraimites went after they were scattered or at least a portion of them, they went to the British Isles. And when they migrated to the United States, for the most part, um, all of those members of the church that came from the British Isles were from the tribe of Ephraim. So that was one of the tribes. So what's the, that, what's the evidence that leads most people to think that they made it to the British Isles? Is that just like tradition that's existed that we kind of think, hey, it's fun to believe? Or is there just like, I don't know, some he, mausoleum? He, or He's saying that when all of these early converts came into the church from the British Isles and they received their patriarchal blessings, they were told they were from the tribe of Ephraim, suggesting then that that area was rich in descendants of Ephraim. And there were church leaders, early church leaders, who said as much as well. Yeah, there's the, there's the people who were from, um, who were designated as from Ephraim, and they were, they were coming from the British Isles. But there's also some historical records, and I'm not an expert in this, and so I can't really give like exact um, details on it, that the, there were Israelites that migrated to the British Isles. And there's traditions within the British cultures um, in, in Scotland and in England and Wales and like all of, all of the various cultures that ended up in the British Isles. They have this tradition that they are of the House of Israel. It's actually pretty fascinating. I can't remember the name of the historian, but I remember there's this beautiful quote from a historian that said, to tell the history of the Jews is to tell the history of the world. It's true. Because mm -hmm. we just like yeah. really, if, if you try and track down all the mass migrations, it would just blow your mind how far it really did indeed go. Mm. See, us Southern Californians, like we don't like going past Santa Barbara, don't like going <laughs> further south than San Diego unless it's a real crazy trip or we need to get cheap pharmaceuticals or Oakley glasses. <laughs> then we might go into Tijuana or Ensenada. Great surfing <laughs> yeah. down there. You know what I'm saying? But we got everything we need here. Three miles north, three miles south. And who wants to go east into the Mojave to those like Vegas people? So, you know, it's like, like we're, we're content, you know? we don't we don't end up in anchorage alaska we don't end up in lithuania but i mean jewish history it's amazing just how far they went so yeah and if i could just jump in and say just because this is a point of a little bit of difference on our sides like for us it's still a little bit more of an unknown but i like what cardin's saying because genetically if there's a historical abraham which we all at this table believe there was genetically there's there would be massive spread throughout yeah. the world to Cardin's point. Absolutely. So if, if yeah. you go back 10 generations, you have a thousand ancestors. Mm -hmm. so if you go back 20 generations, you have a thousand times a thousand, you have over a million ancestors. Mm -hmm. So if you were to go back to the generation of Abraham, which would be like 
we'd have one ancestor like, oh, well over a hundred generations back yeah like yeah, yeah genetically we everybody yeah. well yeah but then there's also time. a point where instead of getting more ancestors now the tree starts going down yeah that's right yeah. you know what i'm saying and it because starts there were fewer humans because there are fewer so humans just to like validate something that was brought up earlier so as we we're talking about the lost tribes and sean was noting kind of why they ended up getting sacked by the Assyrians, right? That they, they'd gone somewhat apostate, their worship right. practices weren't right. They'd set up their own temple. Right. So um, in Jerusalem, the priests there understood and the Deuteronomic historian understood that there was only supposed to be a temple in Jerusalem. So these competing sites of worship were considered to be a problem, considered to be a sor sort of apostasy. So I, I kid you not, Okay, there is another Israelite temple that's been found yes. where they've done archaeological work on it outside of Jerusalem, and I can't remember if it was. It was definitely in the land of Israel. I can't remember if it was. No, it's twenty in minutes. Judah. It's like twenty minutes away from Jerusalem. Okay. The one that they're excavating right now. So really, that's amazing. Yeah, there's, so, on the altar of the temple, there's residue, okay, from whatever they were burning back then. Mm -hmm. And so they've tested the residue to Whoa. see like what things were they burning as part of their offerings. Yeah. I kid you not. Okay, one of the things they were burning, cannabis. Wow. wow are, are you serious? serious? The guy said they were, they were smoking weed and everything. You may not uh. be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was going to try and just not make a disrespectful joke and say they were smoking weed, but no joke. <laughs> cannabis. Hey, well, you heard how the that Oracle, at, you heard how the Oracle at Delphi they think was actually getting high off the natural fumes that were coming mm -hmm. from the chasm that really? ended up being yeah that where the where the oracle of delphi is they actually uh, for a while there they thought that maybe they were abusing opiates and then you know that the, people cast aspersions on that theory because they also thought it was a little bit disrespectful and so on and so forth until they found out that there's natural fissures that emit hallucinogenic gases from the volcanic activity in the area really? and they think that it was causing the oracles to oracle been there. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh you yeah. have? Was it Delphi a couple years ago? I didn't feel a thing. Oh, I thought you so. said, been there. You're like, yeah, I've been high and stuff. You know what <laughs> I I'm was saying? Delphi. I was like, I'm like, man, I didn't feel any I was of like, that. I know the bicker tonights are down with wine and coffee, but like, I didn't realize it was leading to sensational hallucinogenic visions. Now, the Elysian feels. Now, I, now I am converting. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But anyway, keep going. Wow, that yeah, is so cool, man. One of the other myths about the Ten Tribes is that um, they need to be located and brought back and that they'll have their own prophets and that they'll have basically their own religion. Mm -hmm. That's actually a myth too. Um, although they will have prophets at a certain point and they, the Book of Mormon does tell us that they have scriptures as well, mm -hmm. their prophet, when they are brought back, when they are um, gathered again, will be the same prophet as everyone else. It'll be the okay. same prophet as everyone else. Uh, because there are, there is only one true Highlander. Oh, sorry. Right. There is only one true line of priesthood on the earth. There's mm -hmm. not seventeen thousand. Right. There's not however many countries they've gone to. Um, when they re when they return, they will be restored to the land of their the land of their inheritance. Okay. As of right now, they're being gathered. This is according to the Book of Mormon. They're being gathered to the lands of their inheritance. But when they are restored after Christ comes to Zion, this is in 3rd Nephi chapter 21, right? Okay. The 10 tribes Sean will be- doesn't like that chapter at all. That's one thing I've learned. I love this yeah. chapter, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they will be restored to the land of their inheritance. And the, the two tribes, Judah and Benjamin, will be restored to the land of Jerusalem. All right. And the tribe of Joseph will be restored to the land of America or the land of, of the new world, the new promised land. Cool. Yeah. So we don't need to find them. We kind of know where they are. Well, and this is all going to get taken care of by Jesus them is anyway. Basically, just missionary work. That's what that is. Yeah, that's the okay. work of the gathering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in fact, uh, there's some interesting stuff. The sign of Ephraim is the sign of a bull. And the, yeah, I'm a Taurus, baby. Yeah, and that the bull will uh, push them Bulls back together. With their horns will like push the people back together. Yeah. yeah, and so that's the work of the tribe of Ephraim. Yeah, and what's so interesting about your book too, Don? Got to throw it up, bro. 
Gotta throw it up. What book is it? Oh, it's the lost, lost 116 pages. pages. Rediscovering the Book, book of Mormon's mystery. Okay, I asked you to put it up, not to give us the whole census thing. No, you know what I'm, no I'm just totally kidding. <laughs> totally kidding. <laughs> In chapter seven. <laughs> you know. So, and um, it came to pass. What I like about your book, Don, is that you mentioned that at the beginning of the restoration, um, Joseph Smith's attitude, his terminologies, and his writings and journal entries and just behavior mirrored more a concept of the gathering of Israel oh, totally. more uh, and being a gatherer of of those lost 10 tribes than really being somebody who's restoring a gospel that is conceptualization probably because he was doing more Old Testament writings mm -hmm. in what would have been the content of the lost 116 pages. He was self perceiving as a gather gatherer of Israel exactly. and less as a more like Restorer of the church. Restorer. It, it wasn't that that restoration language kind of was a later development. Well, it was a restoration, but he was focused more on the restoration of Israel at first than the restoration of the New Testament church. And we really carry that on today. So we passionately pursue Israel that as we understand of where they are. And the Book of Mormon obviously gives an indication of that, you know, more in, you know, Central America. Mm. So we we passionately pursue Israel as the number one focus of our church wow. in a missionary standpoint. Wow, cool. Yeah. Maybe we shouldn't use the word pursue. So it doesn't sound like you're like actually physically running them down. We're getting them. You know, We're catching getting them. them you know? <laughs> We're in Doubles hot pursuit, down. baby. You know, which is like actively proselyting or something. That's, <laughs> you know, that's, it. that's hilarious. So one final thought on this one. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the, the House of Israel is um, they're being gathered across the world as mm -hmm. we speak, right? Um, both of our churches are pers not pursuing, are <laughs> attempting to <laughs> proselyte actively and yeah. engage to bring them to bring them back, bring them home. Um, but they cannot be called gathered. They cannot be called restored until they accept Jesus Christ. Amen. They cannot be called completely restored unless they accept the true Messiah, as Jacob says, as their Messiah. That okay. is how we know that they're a little ultimatum-ish to me. I, to no. <laughs> yeah, they're gathered to Christ. That's the whole right. point, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Cool. Beautifully said. I don't know if I would have put it that way, but you know what I'm saying? It was pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. You know what I'm saying? Um, so anyway, all right. Well, um, any last thoughts before we go? Did we miss anything that wasn't included, my friends? We got in the North Pole. We got in the cannabis. I think we got it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you ever done weed, Don? No, I'm just kidding. You don't have to answer that question. You know I haven't always been in the church. I was about to say, we saw the tats in your hair. I'm sure you're dead. So, um, and, you know, I'm just totally kidding. So, um, all right. Let us know where uh, Let us know where we go wrong. Let us know if you've got any really cool insight here that we just, you know, haven't covered yet. Um, keep the conversation going in the comments below. Check out Sean's book. It's called Signs of the Second Coming of Christ. It's super cool and it's super funny. He also has a podcast titled The Same. And uh, check out Sean Bradley's book, The Lost 116 Pages. And Don Josh. Bradley. Don, Don Sean Bradley's Bradley. the basketball player. I know. I'm sorry. And Much then, taller. Josh, throw up yours too. Here we go. Yeah. What is that? Witnessing Miracles, Historical Evidences for the Resurrection. All right. Rock on. Awesome. And Brad, it's not nonfiction, but it's got dragons. So you got to throw up yours too, bro. Check out Dragon Thief and give it a review because it's new. Dragon what I'm Thief, saying, which I co-wrote with my wife under the pen names of Blake and Raven Pen, and we promise it's not erotica. It sounds like it is, but it's not. <laughs> no. You know, it, with, it's basically with, if you like Brandon Blake Sanderson, and Raven Pen, it that starts sounds, in Delphi. No, it doesn't. Uh, it, <laughs> so if if you like like Brandon Sanderson or like Aragon, uh, if you like those kind of books, you'd like this one. Okay, yeah, awesome. Mine, mine doesn't young have young dragons fantasy. in it, but Yet. in a future edition, I'm going to add them. Dude, yeah. awesome. I'm the, loving the it. Lost I just need to story find of the dragon. source that says that like Nephi slew a dragon with the sword of Laban. And once I find oh, that, oh, that'd be an awesome story. We got to write a fantasy novel. Damn. Damn. This is epic. All right. If you want to see more, check us out at wardradio.com. Right. Hey guys, thanks for hanging out with us. If you haven't had a chance yet, please like this video and consider sharing with your friends or subscribing. Also, there should be a video coming up right about here or here where you can continue watching. If you want to visit us on Twitter, we're at 
Ward Radio Show. If you want to check us out online, we're at wardradio.com. And if you'd like to consider contributing to the program, please check us out at Midnight Mormons or at Ward Radio on Venmo. That's one of the best ways that you can contribute to the program. Either way, we're glad to have you here. Thanks for hanging out with us and always check out more on wardradio.com.